Yes, how are you farmers? Actually, let's say that uh, it's another time. I'm very, very happy, man. Because actually, Eugene Poultry Farm Limited, you have supported us farmers. We are so grateful for that. Also, kwa saa hii nimetamani sana kufundisha wakulima. Because nilikuwa nikienda seminars, tukitembea kwa seminars nyingi sana, tukifundisha watu kila county. Sahi sasa nimebidi, I've decided now to put up an online training. Like today we are going to tackle Coriza, infectious Coriza. Tunataka tujue mbona kuku zetu zinafura macho, mbona kuku zetu zinatoa parcels in the in the eyes. So wakulima leo tunaenda kujua. Mimi naitwa Dr. Eugene, CEO Eugene Poultry Farm Limited. I'm sure mwenzangu anaweza akajintroduce. Hello farmers, welcome again. Uh may I repeat by introducing myself because I have been introducing myself uh, in the other videos. We've been inter interacting uh, my names are Alex Muita. I'm a veterinary by profession. I work with uh, Eugene Poultry Farm, the poultry, de the poultry veterinary de department. So welcome to this session. And today we are going to talk about infectious coriza as my CEO has said. So I welcome you all. And before all, let's sanitize first. Yes. Sanitize is key. As per the COVID-19 protocol. As per the COVID-19 protocol. Thank you. As per the COVID-19 protocol. Santai, 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 Santai. So, Akulima, Karibu Sana. Vet Alex, Karibu Sana. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, we can begin. Tell us, Koraiza. Yes, uh, mostly farmers have been hearing this term as from the beginning. You know, it has been a complication to many farmers. Let's say around Nairobi and other counties. We are covering around 38 counties. And Koraiza has been one of the factors that are leading to us being confused about how to rear poultry. So first, we, let's talk about coriza. What's coriza? When I talk about coriza, coriza has been, is a term that has been used from the past by these poultry farmers. It covered uh, all the respiratory illnesses, including mycoplasmosis, uh, including uh, fallpox, including CRD. This is a chronic respiratory disease. But uh, now today we are going to talk about infectious coriza. Yes. So infectious coriza is a respiratory bacterial disease which has affected so many farmers. Uh, this, it is not well known about its cause, but all every farmer knows is that it, it's caused by a bacteria. But uh, today let's uh, focus on the ways on how to prevent that disease, the treatment, how it is caused, the way it, how it originates, eh? and how it, it, it affects our birds. So let's start by um, talking about the cause of coriza. Coriza, mostly in our farms, is caused by how we handle our birds. Let's start by biosecurity. One bird may be affected by coriza because coriza can be acute. Of course, mostly coriza is acute, but sometimes uh, coriza becomes chronic. Okwakulima wenye hamwelewi acute ina manisha. Iyo ugonjwa itakuja haraka, na pia ita itachukua muda mchache ikuwe imeenda. Chronic ina manisha inaezika kuja pole pole hata usigundue kwamba hiyo kuku na hiyo ugonjwa. Lakini uchukue hiyo kuku uiweke kwa zingine zote zigonjeke na siku moja ukikuja kugundua utapata zime develop zimeenda kwa stage nyingi so unamaanisha kuwa hii ugonjwa ya coriza coriza hii ni ugonjwa wenye kuku zinafura macho si ni kweli ni kweli so zikifura hii macho unapata kuku imefura macho kabisa inafunga hii macho moja alafu nyingine pia inakuja inafunga si kabisa ndio umesema cause ni bacterial infection yeah. so kama ni bacterial infection inamaanisha inamaanisha kuwa from my view of point bacterial infection it can be prevented because from from my side of medicine because I'm a medical I'm a medical doctor so from my side as I understand the term bacteria bacterial infection that one can be preventable true true doctor so now so now so now can you tell us more about this how does these bacteria come into the poultry house up to in, it invade these birds and then get out of it so after the bacteria develops you will find that uh, okay this disease utapata kwamba mostly morbidity rate yake iko very high passing morbidity ni kumaanisha 
the inile trans, transmission kutoka kwa kuku mwingine kuchukwenda kwa mwingine iko very high utapata kwamba kuku akienda feed ile chakula yenye yule wa horizon ame feed utapata kwamba huyo kuku anapata hizo hizo germs za bacteria na utapata kwamba huyo kuku akipata hizo germs kuzipitisha kwenda kwa kuku mwingine ni rahisi lakini though mortality rate yake iko very low iko up to 20% so utapata kwamba kuna signs ambazo unafaa kuangalia kwa kuku wako ukipata kwamba kuku wako ako na coryza coryza utapata kwamba inafanana na magonjwa zingine kwa mfano nikisema chronic respiratory illness watu wengine wata confuse fallpox na coryza lakini kuna symptoms ambazo coryza iko nazo ambazo hatujawahi kwa fallpox watu wengi mnajua kwamba in, in infectious coryza the first symptom is swelling facial swelling not necessarily only eyes but facial swellings facial swellings affects uso ikivimba utapata kwamba the wattles hizi vitu mbili unaona zimehanga hapa hivi zitavimba na pia macho moja itavimba na ikivimba itaanza kutoa usaha pass na hiyo pass inaka inanuka so ndio hiyo tunasema kwamba ukisoma sehemu imeandikwa kwamba purulent discharge from either the it can be an ocular source ama inazo, inaza kuwa from the sinuses no sol yeah so uh, another symptom the swelling of the eyes tulikuwa tumeongelea si ndio macho ikivimba usiwaiona kuku amefunga tu macho udhani kwamba ni coryza macho ya coryza ikifungana iki ina fura the second symptom itakuwa kwa hapa kwa hii njia ya kwenda kwa respiratory the breathing system utapata kwamba hapa kwa trachea utapata kitu kama makamasi hivi mucus hata ukifungua huyo kuku mwenye amekufa na coryza ukimwangalia kwa ndani utaona kuna makamasi iko kuja huku juu juu alafu another symptom tunaongelea sneezing watu huwa wana differentiate between sneezing and coughing kuku mwenye ako na coryza does not cough Alafu another symptom ni difficulties in breathing. Hiyo tamu wanaita dyspnea. Di, yeah, dyspnea very good. Yeah. Yes, daktari. You know daktari knows this thing. <laughs> He's a human doctor. Yeah, when it comes to those ones I know them very well. Yeah, so difficulties in breathing. So Bila now to mean that dyspnea. now when the when the cuckoos have got a difficult they have got dyspnea, let's say the difficulty in breathing. Yes. And then also you find that a chicken is presenting with a whole facial a, a whole facial swelling, expression yeah. of the of the face, yeah. it's swollen yeah. and then also the eyes also are swollen. Yeah. Producing some parcels inside the eyelids. Yes. Very good. I'm sure that one is the best English we can use here yeah. because I can combine medicine and poultry. Yeah. So now to mean that one, that one we will say it's coryza. Yes. But do we have the specific the specific causes of this of this coryza thing? Uh, as per your department. As my as per my department, the specific cause is a bacteria. Lakini there there are so many causes. In fact, kuna predisposing factors that can cause that disease very fast. Uh, going to that if that chick ama that bird yenyukonayo had another infection of the respiratory system it's very easy for coryza kuingilia hapo sana sana ukiwa umeka kuku wako sehemu ambayo ni chafu ndio maana huwa tuna advise farmers these wood chippings that you do these poultry houses always make sure that you observe clear and very constant biosecurity inasaidia sana that one even doctor do talk about it i'm sure i can talk farmer. also at uh, uh, that one when now it comes to the cleanliness let's say cleanliness one yeah. one alex eh? yeah. actually we can share ideas eh? yeah. because also i've got that nini so when it comes to cleanliness i'm sure what one alex is saying you know some poultry houses you cannot even sit in those houses why do i say so it's because the houses are smelling very badly you will get that the farmer is is using the drinkers to f- to to give the water to the chicken but together those 
those waterers they are they are just putting they are just they are just placing them anyhow and by the end of the day those wood chippings when they are there when you don't turn them when you don't turn those wood chippings you'll get that uh, they turn to be cakes now down the cakes there now the, there will be so much secretion of ammonia which will come from those ones so i'm sure the best way to do it if you are using the wood shavings make sure that you sieve those wood shavings well after you have sieved well now these wood shavings i'm sure you place them in the brooder and if you place them in the poultry house there make sure you turn them daily you can use a fork jembe to turn those wood shavings and then after at least three weeks you should do a routine fumigation in the in your poultry house we have got best drugs which you can use in fumigation of the of your poultry houses we have got ultracide we have got norcleans we have got uh we you can name them there's so many but uh, but but now that one it's for the routine one and then also another advice which i can give there when it comes to biosecurity measures make sure at least in your poultry house have a foot bath you have heard of cross infection mr alex is speaking about cross infection there is a very high rate of cross infection in this chicken uh, why am i saying so this this condition it's a respiratory disease to mean that when that bird breathes there is circulation of air in that house yes if there is that circulation of air in that house what does it mean even the fresh birds those birds will get infected with the disease so to mean that the best one make sure you put an isolation room very far from your poultry house so that so, and that and, and that isolation center should be very very much away whereby other birds cannot access there and then also to add on that the issues of biosecurity there are only four things which you can observe and you become a very successful farmer i'm sure mr vet if i go wrong just correct me because i from that department it's only that uh, i'm doing um, i'm doing the extra studies eh? no you are all right yeah. yeah so if i'm if i'm wrong just let me know there are only four fundamentals which you can uh, have in your farm and have a successful farm one maintaining cleanliness of the feeders and the drinkers and also making sure that there are there bad food bad there whereby you can get yourself and go to your chicken house number two proper housing your house should be well prepared your house i'm sure we will bring that topic of house we will bring that topic on housing i will tell you all the features of a good poultry house i'm sure in our next episode but meanwhile while we have the best poultry house and then also the wood chippings are very clean you love no sick bird and then also you should observe vaccination visit our channel eugene poultry farm limited search for the word vaccination i'm sure you can get the protocol on how you should vaccinate your birds because that that lesson also will combine it with the housing part so farmers make sure that at least when you maintain proper feeding you maintain clean water and you maintain also clean litter in your poultry houses i'm sure these issues of coriza you'll not have it actually it's cleanliness that is what i can say as per my as per my view of point yes okay now let's talk about uh, coriza you know now we were talking about we do not have coriza Doctor was helping you how to stop coriza so let's let's assume now you have coriza in your farm these are the following uh, protocols that you should follow to make sure that you do you either do away with it or you just reduce its infestation so first make sure if you notice there is coriza in your farm those birds that you're suspecting to be sick just eliminate them out of that room separate them to a separate place then do something that he has said fumigation in fact that that many bacteria that causes coriza cannot survive in the environment for more than five minutes so that means if there was cross infection uh, there was infection due to direct contact uh, feed water it will help when you fumigate that house so when we talk about treatment there are several a variety of treatment uh, measures that we are doing everybody knows that once every bird is sick uh, a vitamin is needed that one you know that's for maintenance in fact it boosts the immunity but uh, we have medications like tetracolivit Dr. knows about uh, a medication known as probeta n 
in fact you cannot use pro, pro beta n to the eyes if kama ujaona imekuwa infected so you use tetracolivit uh, tetracolivit is very good there are uh, a variety of in fact if you, you use a drug that contain tylosin it is also very effective but tetracolivit is always good you mix with amylite and also pro beta n if you realize that uh, the eye is swollen na kuna wenye those professionals wenye mnaweza mkatoa pass in that i kuna a good way you need a, a clean cloth sisi tunachukua nguo yote niko na germs tena unaweza kunaenda kuiongezea kwa macho unachukua clean cloth unaenda unaifinya pole pole be professional if you're not professional call a vet then after there administer pro beta n that's what so i can so. speak about that one also and yeah. um, mr alex that one is as per your vet's view and this one also as per my local man's language view because to me i've been managing coriza in my farm if you ask me how i've been managing them actually i've been embracing the tetracyclines the tetra, the, the broad spectrum tetracycline are working very well but in our choice eugene poultry farm limited we are em emphasizing on tetracolvit because the tetracolvit actually i was proven by one of the ultravetis team we were partnering with them they convinced me that uh, tetracolvit is working very well in crisis management I just I, I just decided to have a test of it actually it turned to be the best so to mean that when now you are giving that 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 tetracolvit in the drinking water to mean that now it will be fighting both the gram positive and the gram negative bacterial infections in that chicken system so to mean that either if the bacterial was gram negative or gram positive it will do away with it and then also now you'll get in a situation whereby the eyes of your chicken are swollen bakuna shindwa zitaonaje chakula so farmers that thing is very very tough that the way to go in that case is it's very simple use money to get money you can go and buy a cotton a very clean cotton see so you decided to invest if you cannot get a cotton wool you can just use even you can just use even a very clean clothes whereby you buy the surgical spirit or they do call it methylated spirit the surgical spirit when you dip the cotton inside and then now you use it to swab inside the eyelids removing that pus if you swab there remember that that thing it's an antiseptic in case there was any germ outside there and also at the cloth here you will find that it will it will, it will, it will eventually die so to me that when you rub and remove that pus inside the eye what will follow now the eye is clean but still it's inflammated imevimba bado utafanya aje so it's why we do recommend for pro beta n the pro beta n has to combine has to combine drugs when, when, when it comes to drugs i'm sure they are good eh? because the pro beta n now we have got the beta metason and then also we have got the gentamicin combined in it or another drug so to mean this way when you have this genta genta it's an antibiotic it will treat the eye infection in that eye and this beta metason it's also a broad spectrum steroid you cannot compare it with uh, actually sometimes it's an inter antihistamine due to the reaction of the of the disease but actually the main core of this beta metason it will help you in the aid to remove to to get rid of the inflammation so once the inflammation is going the eye will be opening slowly remember the eye is opening you are treating the eye and also the whole system it's taking tetracolvit why we are recommending at least amylite because amylite it's very strong even if if you realize some chicken poisoning just use amylite amylite is very very strong you can't compare it other, with the other ones i tried amylite i tried tonafos but uh, but i've come to realize amylite is doing good so the amylite it will help boost in appetite of this chicken fast because the chicken is sick it has no appetite so where do you expect them to get appetite so you it's why we give them it's why we give them the amylite and then also amylite is an anti-stress agent because these these birds are, are depressed due to the disease so now the anti-stress agent will get rid of it doctor is emphasizing on tetracolivit is because tetracolivit carries three agents it has a tetracycline colicit and it also got vitamins so even if you use tetracolivit minus amylite you will be safe for your poultry because tetracolivit tetracolivit is sensitive to those bacteria and, and it also treats a variety of diseases including even a uh, salmonella 
anaplasma so many so you can use tetracolivit to clear the whole of the respiratory system and it will help that kuku very well so nivo daktari so to conclude actually i'm very very happy today these are our just episode one in our online training so kindly farmers keep on following our next lesson will be on uh, housing and then also another one will be on vaccination housing stroke vaccination we will just handle it as one this one has been long because in our sumbua sana wakulima kindly remember to subscribe to our youtube channel so that you can be getting updates and click that notification bell down there at least it akwa sawa na mkumbuke ku sanitize na pia na pia mkip distance so mr alex tunashukuru sana yes tafadhali sana farmers msisahau ku subscribe finya ile bell iko huko get notified kwa sababu tuko na mambo mazuri sana ya kushare do we are teaching our farmers the deal is not money it's about capacity building so thank you for your time thank you for your time and then also hapo chini comment comment hapo chini tutoe makosa kama tulifanya makosa sehemu turekebisha hapo chini kwa kwa comments we will be so grateful subscribe thank you pleasure sawa so, bwana daktari naona unapambana kabisa sawa fanya research si muone hata mimi thank you